When most people think of wireless controllers, the first thing that will come to mind is likely the offering from Sony, Microsoft, or even Nintendo's Wii. Wireless controllers give the player the freedom to sit where you want. You can sit back away from your large TV, relax in the armchair, feet up, and enjoy your favourite games. As anyone who bought the NES Classic will know, there is nothing worse than a short wired controller. But before these, what were the options to gamers? Well, what if I was to tell you that wireless gaming goes way back to the Atari 2600? This is the Remote Champ Freedom Fighter joystick. Model number RC350. This was manufactured by Championship Electronics Incorporated. And uh, this is a wireless joystick. Compatible with these systems and I'm sure many others. Atari 2600, Commodore VIC-20 or Commodore 64 that we're going to be testing this with today. ColecoVision, Atari's, and a TI-99-4A. What is a TI-99-4A? Texas Instruments, I would imagine. Don't know a whole pile about that machine, but that's a different topic. Today we're looking at this, so what do we get? Instructions. The RC350 consists of two parts, a transmitter and a receiver. That's handy. And this just goes on to give you some techno babble. Upon reception of the 49-27MC pulse width modulation signal. So the important bit in this is just here, where it says to have the slide switch on the receiver off. If the receiver is in operation with an Atari 2600 or Commodore VIC-20, that is because those machines output 5 volts down the joypad line. As you can see here, in that situation, the receiver takes its power off the machine. Only where the machine does not output a plus 5 volt, such as the Coleco 2400, then we need to put 4 AA batteries in it. Right, enough instructions. What's in the box? Our receiver, first of all. It's a little bigger than I would have expected. There's our on off switch, so we're using the Commodore 64, which outputs 5 volts, so we'll leave that off. This has your typical 9 pin connector, and actually quite a long lead on it as well. And that is where your batteries would go, and the battery compartment on this is absolutely spotless. That there, really good condition. We're going to tear these down in a minute, this on the joystick, just to see what's going on. The joystick though, the main event. <laughs> oh, just how awesome is that? That is ridiculous. How comical is that? A very erect looking uh, transmitter. With a nice red knob on it. The base of this thing obviously has suction cups because that's stuck to the table. The base of this thing is actually quite big, so I would say there's probably a fair bit going on in here. The stick itself has. Uh, feels okay. Never was a great fan of joysticks. Um, has a sort of typical range of movement that you'd find in your typical Commodore 64 joystick. The action buttons are a bit mushy, but is what it is. And this, I presume, yep, is where our 9 volt battery goes. And that also appears to be in very good condition. Now, 
One thing I want to put out there is that I cannot find anything online about this. So as said, this is a model RC350B and it was made by Championship Electronics. Now, I have been able to find another Championship Electronics joystick that looks exactly like this, but it's not wireless. Instead it has a retractable wire coming out of here, which obviously coils up inside this large base. But I've been able to find absolutely nothing about the wireless version. So if anyone out there knows anything about it, I would be very grateful if you would stick something in the comments below. Okay, before we start testing this thing, I want to tear it down and see what's going on. So, we'll start with the receiver. Okay. So I was hoping to see like a date stamp in here somewhere because I don't even know when this thing was made. I'm just judging by the picture of the machines on the back of it and with the Commodore 64 on there being the, the newest machine pictured. Um, I'm putting this roughly mid 80s. This is a revision C board. So perhaps this thing had been around for a while. But as I say, I cannot find anything about it online. What's going on here? Our antenna actually seems a bit loose. Let's see if we can tighten this screw a bit. Mm, not really. Right, here's the board. Mm, it almost looks like something's been spilt on it. I'm hoping that's just flux. And there's no signs of anything leaking as such. There's only the one capacitor here, but yeah. So we have three wee ICs on here. There's one there at the top by uh, Motorola. Then we have an LM. 1872N and a wee RCA chip down here as well. So, a couple of pots on it here, but I'm not gonna just leave well enough alone, don't touch anything. We're just in for a look. Uh, again, there's no manufacturer dates on it anywhere, so mm. let's get this back together and take the joystick apart. Right, let's see if we can get the base off. That was easy. Now, I'm really intrigued just to see if there's any manufacturer's uh, date stamps in here. See when this was made. And again, there's absolutely nothing. There's our wee circuit board in here. And like in the receiver, we have an LM. 1871N. So if you, I don't want to take this apart, but you can maybe see in there how this works. Maybe not. It's just a wee metal dome in there. And an, an, an arm coming down off the bottom of this. And when the joystick's moved, it just pushes the metal dome down, make contact, and that should be your movement. Yeah, not a lot to see, right? I'm eager to test it. Let's uh, get it back together and give it a wee bit of a clean. Get it back together and uh, let's see if it works because I haven't actually even tried this thing yet. Hope it works.
Much better. Right, let's get the Commodore set up, and we'll be back in a minute. Uh, problems. My Commodore 64 has died. Well, sort of. The power LED has failed. The machine's booted up okay. But there's no keyboard. Oh well. That's a bit of a kick in the teeth. Right, we need to think of something else to use. Could we use the Amiga? I'm sure we probably could. The Amiga used a one button, well, two button joystick. Mostly a one button joystick. Yeah, I think we'll do that. Let's grab the 1200 and uh, we'll be back in a minute. Need to fix this thing now though. Right, we have the Amiga out. Thankfully, it works. Uh, we've hooked it up to the VGA monitor this time, rather than the TV. And we're using our GBS 8200 scan doubler. These are a great wee bit of kit for only like 20 pound. I'll maybe do a wee review on this sometime, and there's a couple of wee tweaks you can do to this to improve the picture quality. It's been around for ages though, and well, everybody's done their take on it, so well. Maybe one day. Right, we have our Wireless joystick, batteries in. Let's get this thing plugged in. Okay, should we extend our aerial? I think we should. This is just awesomely retro. Look, is that a real? <laughs> I love it. Right, I am intrigued to know what this does, if anything. So, games. WSD load. What would be a good game? What would be a good game? Agony. That'd be a good game. A shooter. back a bit. Right, let's turn our joystick on. Press fire to start. It sort of works. works, but there's no up and down. Why is no up and down? No, up and down. But you know what? There is zero lag as advertised. Watch. Makes contact there. You can actually feel it inside where it's making contact. Yeah. Okay, Agony was maybe not the best. The best game to pick. That was a bit fast paced. Um, what else have we got? Perry Le Chef out to lunch. This is a, actually a very good wee platformer. Dying or not working, but uh, the player control is instant. I do have to give a credit where credit's due. Well, maybe a slight delay there. Is there look far? Mm. No, I don't think so. I think that's just in game. Of 
course I can't play this game very well because there's no up and down, so... I'm hoping that it's just a bad contact in here. Or possibly, yes, there could be a break in the wire. But, uh, there's only one way to find out. Let's turn this thing down again and see what's going on. Right, so I've tore the joystick to bits. And I've been doing a bit of digging. Just show you here quickly how it works. As I was trying to explain earlier, it's just these wee uh, metal domes here. So you push the joystick in your direction. And these wee legs on it here. Just push against those domes. Making contact, and that's it. Simple as that. I would actually expect that up here at the buttons, it's just the same wee domes like that. Very common joysticks of this era. Now, up and down do not work. Down, for example, is blue. Up is red. Um, left and right are green and brown. So, let's test left and right first. So, green. And it goes to this big blob here. And that's more or less a dead short. But, bring us over here so you can see it better. So, we'll just test that one again. Try brown. There's this big blob behind it, I think. And again, that's more or less dead short. Up, which is red, yep. The way back here, I think. So you can see, I think there's a break in the cable. So it's intermittent there, where it's working. Or there is quite a bit of resistance on it. Down. This is blue. This is similar. No, no, that's okay. Hmm. Blue, well, earlier on it was reading quite a high uh, resistance as well. But the red one here, which is up, is definitely... Uh, well, if it came down a bit, there's a jump it around again. There's a spiking. So, I'm uh, going to assume that there's a break in this cable. So we will replace this. Um, this wasn't working. It was giving us problems. So we're going to replace that anyway. The black here, just let me test the black. The black's a common between them. I would expect this to be okay since uh, all the other buttons are working. Where's it go to? It's here at the front. Yeah, that's fine. Orange is the fire button. For the sake of completeness. Again, dead short. So, red and blue. Let's get some wire cut and get those replaced. Just while we're waiting for the iron to heat up, interesting note. Here on the board where it's labeled white is actually where the red was connected for up. Um, so possibly this has already been replaced by someone before. You know, a wee bit of uh, red wire here that we're going to be using. Right, let's see if this thing's warm. 
What's this here on here? Where's the take out? This one here. There we are. Is that out? There's a new one in. Right, so I don't have any USB connectors, so I've just stripped the wire off that one. And uh, try and get it connected here. There we are. It's a bit burnt, but it's on. It's only the sheath of the cable is a bit burnt. Right. Let's check our continuity again. over here so you can see it better one more like that much better not dead short right the other one was the blue wasn't it Let's just try it again. I mean, that's reading okay now. You know, if I wiggle it about a bit. What we'll do is we'll just reflow that. In fact, up here. What we'll do is just reflow all of the wires. Possibly, you know, that uh, this here, the red, could have just been a dry joint. It didn't look like it, but it might have been. Nah, my heat shrink's not going to go over that. I don't have any heat shrink the right size. Oh well, doesn't matter. Okay, um, I'm going to reflow all these. Then we'll get it back together and test again. And fingers crossed, that solves the problem. Okay, we're back. Loading up uh, Perry out to lunch again. Got this back together. Hopefully, hopefully it works. Right. Right works. Left works. Up works. Have we fixed it? Certainly looks like it. Just need to find a game now that uses down because this game doesn't. But up's working, that's good. And as you can see, there definitely is no lag, and the joystick actually is. It actually is quite nice to use. I would prefer a clicky button in there, to be honest. I suppose we could put a clicky button in there on the joystick. Uh, like we did on the CD32 joypad, but uh, I think for this thing, just because it is, well, it seems to be rare, I can't find anything about it online, I think we'll just leave well enough alone. Right, let's see if up and down work this time. Up works, down works. Yep, I think we fixed it. So how does it play in a shooter?
say the pot, the, the joystick plays really well. There is absolutely no lag in it. I'm, I'm actually surprised by that. I was expecting to uh, review this thing and tell you just how terrible it is. Right, that's enough of that. Um, one other thing though I need to test is, it said on the box 20 feet, up to 20 feet away. Right. Let's put on a bit of alien breed and I'm going for a walk 20 feet away to see if I can still control this. So, we're here right beside it. Let's go to the door of the cave. So about five feet away. Still working okay. Let's go outside. So yeah, at about, so I'm now about say, seven feet away from it, and uh, it's not working, not very good. So walking say about 15 feet away is when it all totally fails, but at about Say just over six feet, seven feet away, for whatever reason, up again. Oh, look, stop working. No, that's not, there we are. Yeah, so at a distance of about six, seven feet, up doesn't work. But look, for this scenario, this is fine. Of course, you could say a wired joystick in this distance is also fine, but let me see. If that was there, I need to turn this around so I can see it. And if I go down the bottom of the cave here. Yeah, so this is sort of the distance I would be if I was playing it on the, the TV. And it's fine. I maybe didn't like it outside because Obviously, other than the door, it had the, the signal had to travel through walls and all. So, but within the cave itself, I go to the far corner. Uh, it's a bit hit and miss. Funny, it's up though. It just keeps doing that on. Well, you get a range of about ten feet. Certainly not bad for. Uh, wireless joystick from the mid 1980s. Well that's all I have to show you today. If you enjoyed this video please hit the thumbs up as it really does help the channel. Please subscribe, leave a comment, check out all my other stuff and uh, I'll see you next time.